And let's get started. And hello, everyone, and dear participants, dear colleagues, dear attendees. Uh, so, welcome to the seventh annual uh, Life in Kyrgyzstan uh, conference. So, my name is Kadrbek Sultakeyev, and I will be your moderator for this session. And the name of our session is Local Development. So I would like to make a short introduction to our session. Uh, local development is a relatively young theory in social science based on the identification and use of the resources and internal capacities of communities, villages, and also rayons, districts, oblasts, etc. So the local development approach takes into account uh, endogenous possibilities of the territories and villages. So in short, the uh, local development uh, is a process of territorial development, I would say. Uh, so before we start our presentation, I would, I would like to share some more information. So we have two language channels in Zoom. Just to next, uh, just to next, to chat window, and also the session will be provided. I uh, will be recorded by the organizers. And also, I would like to remind uh, you that uh, each speaker has twenty minutes to speak, and ten minutes for questions and answers. Uh, and when the speaker gets close to five minutes. I will remind. I will let uh, let them let them know. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, you can ask them in the QA section by typing in the chat box, or you may you may raise your hand and ask your question directly without uh, typing your message in the chat box. Now we are delighted to hear from our three speakers on their own research. Uh, they are Aida Musayeva, Muhammad uh, Ali, and Didor uh, Berdichev. Uh, first, I will ask Aida from uh, University of Pech to present her topic on Korean uh, Samuel Andong as a model for local economic development for the Kyrgyz Republic. And with, with that, I will pass the floor to our first presenter. Please, Aida, you can start your presentation. Yeah, make it full screen, please. Sorry, one minute, I see. OK. OK. Do you see? Yes. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Aida. I will present in English. It's very nice to see you even online. I am PhD candidate. This is our last year. This is my one part of uh, doctoral dissertation research. Uh, my topic is about Korean Semal Undong as a model for local economic development for the Kyrgyz Republic. So objectives. This study uh, explores the application of the Korean authentic model, Sema Lundong, in Kyrgyzstan and assess its contribution to local and the rural development. In this regard, we have research questions. What is the mechanism for application of Korean Sema Lundong in Kyrgyzstan? Who are the main local actors? In the Kyrgyz version of Semalundong, what are the major differences, similarities between original Korean Semalundong and the Kyrgyz version Semalundong schemes of local development? First of all, what does Semalundong mean? Semalundong is a new village development that enables villagers and local communities to enhance the quality of life based on Semalundong principles such as diligence, self help, and cooperation. The term Semal is formed by a combination of Se, which means uh, new, 
Mangal refers village and Undong is development or movement. In one word, Semal Undong is new village development. To understand this model, we have to go back to Korean history. From authoritarian regime to democracy, developmental state, we will touch upon in, in this theoretical framework. Uh, the administrative system in Semalundong era, it was in 1970s, was highly centralized and the local autonomy was not accessible. Budget planning, state control, evaluation, all adopted by Pak chun hee military regime, the president of that era. And in this case, academic community is divided when it comes to this model, new village development. Uh, some uh, academic community refers that the president park influence involvement in this model and such uh, miraculous uh, achievement uh, could have been achieved. And uh, he is a national leader. The president responded to the needs of Koreans the specific political goal and the direction that encouraged full engagement in the, of the citizen in the Semalundong initiative. Semalundong, some, this is a pro Semalundong and against uh, saying that Semalundong is an authoritarian policy of rural modernization backed by the dictator and uh, President Park chung he uh, used this model to enhance his uh, term to get uh, support and vote from countryside. However, uh, that era, democracy wasn't even heard, was not available. In this model, citizen participation and the election of women leaders in Sema Lundong in highly patriarchal Korean society was the beginning of the first democratic regime. And uh, they considered that uh, the election of the women participation was the first sign of the democratic regime. And the other theory says that development, developmental state in Sema Lundong, the Korean government blessed with uh, the pursuit of export driven economy to subsidize rural development model and the five year economic and social development plans uh, help it to Sema Lundong to finance all these uh, projects. Industrialization, export oriented policy, catching up period. Sema Lundong is modernization movement that went in hand in hand with urban industry and the developed agricultural and industrial sectors. Characteristic of this model, uh, the emphasis first, uh, they focused on the mindset change through education and the can do spirits community development uh, mostly concerned about first infrastructure building because country was devastated. They have had a really tragic history. They were colonized civil war. And for them, it was really, they have to build in their infrastructure. And the income increase uh, was motivated in this model, vinyl houses and offices and cash crop, chestnuts, animal husbandry. To increase competition, the Korean government has divided villages into basic, self-reliant, and self-sufficient. Each category is subsidized based on its performance. The more successful, the more grants. As we see, government impulse and all outputs. 10 years, government subsidized from state uh, budget. Billions, billions won spent in this rural development. The main project in this table, so expansion of village roads, establishment farm roads, building small villages, et cetera, et cetera. This was a new community building. The, they have, uh, Korea has Hakyangyak and the Dure cooperation, traditional cooperation culture. Uh, they, the villagers gave their labor free to improve their community. So step by step, the villages, the roofs, uh, the bridges constructed with the help of a government budget finance, people uh, gave their labor for free. And this model in our country in Kyrgyzstan, how uh, this model is implementing 
because this is very historical, authentic, belongs to Korean culture, how it can be implemented and what is the motivation of application in Kyrgyzstan. Korea became donor country, first of all, in 2010, and uh, there was uh, pressure from international community. Uh, so they have now exporting their similar London model in Africa and uh, now in Central Asia. The methodology comparative analysis was applied. I have prepared some structured questionnaire paper based form and to get data, 25 pilot villages from three oblasts region, Batkin, Osh, Chui, and the, the total respondents 48 field study period was the last year from October to December. As you see in the map, uh, the main local areas come from southern part of uh, provinces, Osh and the Batkin. <clears throat> the Malundong is a Malundong, a local economic development. I am, uh, we are searching alternatives to improve our local economy. The total population is uh, six, six, over 6 million people lives um, in Kyrgyzstan and 65% uh, lives in rural areas. The local self-government I look at are subsidized uh, from state and they are 82% of them are under dotation. So they, are, they cannot uh, finance themselves. And foreign investments in the countryside are mana from heaven. So Sema Lundang in Kyrgyzstan uh, now launched under the Koika My Village project. Koika is Korea International Cooperation Agency. The project duration is four years, starting from 2019, finalizing next year. And the target beneficiaries should reach up to 100,000 from 35 thousand residents up to 100,000 residents. The project budget is three and a half million. One million is contributed from Kyrgyz government. And the, the main objective of this project is to improve the Kyrgyz rural lifestyle through Korean Semalundong principles, diligence, help, help, and a cooperation. The prime minister came to Kyrgyzstan in 2019 and it was a start of the My Village project in 30 pilot villages. Our study included 25 five villages we couldn't reach because of the October events last year with the changing our regime, Soran Bajenbek regime. And in the rural areas, there were so many protests and we, our schedule really changed and we couldn't reach. However, 25 pilot villages is good contribution. And how the village, villages are selected from 452, 53, sorry, uh, local self-governments, only 45 showed interest in this model. And then the Gamsumo government agency for local self-government interesting relation on the Kyrgyz government, known Gamsumo, uh, they have uh, got all application from uh, I look at local self-government, and there was a competition. So at the end, 30 villages are selected. Those 30 villages are uh, more experienced uh, working with NGOs, and uh, they have some international uh, experiences working with projects, and they are selected. And uh, we are searching what is the application scheme. And the very interesting thing is, they have chosen Ashar. Ashar is a traditional volunteer participation of residents. It is uh, practiced in rural areas. It is one time method of collaboration, mainly local sub governments use when we have to clean our, you know, the uh, in the spring months. And the funding scheme is each villages of the 30, 30 pilot villages, each get 25,000 in the first phase. And it has three phases. Then if they are managed and uh, all their projects, they will be promoted to the next stage and the funding will be also increased up to $4,000. And the third phase, final phase, and they will get 35,000. So one uh, municipality village will get three time funding from Korea. And uh, 
uh, we are so interested who are the key actors in the rural areas. So Koika has a donor, Kamsumo from central level coordinator, I look Matu from local level coordinator. Of course, the uh, engines, locomotives of these projects are local Semal leaders, Kyrgyz, Uzbek residents, they are the executors of these projects. Uh, there was a uh, many discussion uh, when I have started this research and we have, uh, when I have chosen methodology, because we tried to test uh, using SPSA, some statistical uh, me mechanism, but we are searching authentic Korean model application. That's why we have uh, set competitive uh, method. Sema uh, Alundong. It was a government-led policy, poverty reduction, nation building, income increase, rural development, attitudinal change. Uh, local development scheme was uh, top-down and bottom-up approach, integrated approach. Their basic principles, self diligent self-help and cooperation government at that time was authoritarian regime, highly centralized that main actor was government, president, President office, including all layers of the government institution and officials and villages. Local participation, there is also many questions because it was also return regimes. They were first to participate. However, the other community said it was full volunteer participation because they have had their uh, unique uh, traditional collaboration culture. And the investment was from Korean state invested in millions of won for one decade. Uh, if we switch, return to the Quaker My Village, it, will, it is a NGO-led rural development policy to improve the Kyrgyz rural lifestyle. The collaboration is horizontal, where I look at uh, local self, uh, local semi leader, ordinary participant, uh, participants work together. Ashar is a basic principle. Ashar method uh, is used. We have democratic regime, decentralized. Uh, it's not authoritarian regime. And the main actors are Kamsumo, I look at the local uh, Samoan leaders, full volunteer participation, and Koika contribution, investment from Koika contribution. I look at also uh, finance some shortfalls, con contribution from ordinary citizen, including migrants also contribute to this uh, the Korean model. So first preliminary achievements of the Korean model in Kyrgyzstan, as you see, we cannot measure because it has just started and this is the first, uh, uh, first achievements, first findings that in all certain pilot villages, for example, Batken Oblasai village, they build their I'm small bridges. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm very sorry, you have left uh, five minutes. Okay, okay, I am finalizing. So all the, the all projects, irrigation and water, health, transport and road, education, community well-being. After collapse of Soviet Union, there were no uh, investment in building all their issues. That's why the Korea model helped to build all this stuff. And the discussion, there is discussion. Um, Ashar method has also limitation because uh, there are no uh, people, migration is high. And Ashar can, if Ashar will be used uh, continuously, the, its value will be diminished. So this is a uh, one findings from our cases. Uh, however, contribution from donor country is visible and can bring I look at two people work together improve their villages. Finally, acceptance of the foreign idea in local rural development has positive effects on the life, lifestyle of the people. And second phase of the Koika. My village has started successfully. So we hope the final stage will be followed in further research. This is uh, some, uh, some uh, pictures from field study. So as you see, irrigation, irrigation, drinking water, building, kindergarten, lightning, asphalt, uh, everything is local development in our rural areas. Thank you very much. That's all. Thank you, Aida, uh, for your uh, interesting and informative uh, presentation. And uh, you were also, you, you could also finish on time. So 
Uh, now I would like to open the floor for the discussion. So is there any question who wants to ask? Or yeah, or you can also type in the in the, in the chat box. It's up to you. Maybe Muhammad will stop them. We will collect all. Uh, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe while other uh, colleagues are, uh, are thinking, uh, yes. I, would, I would like to ask one question. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I like uh, the way how you explained your presentation. Uh, you described uh, your uh, theoretical uh, background uh, really uh, uh, well, and however, I got a little confused uh, confused about uh, your research question because you didn't stop uh, and you didn't give much information on your uh, research questions. Since research questions are very important in any research, and uh, I have uh, I have this question, so. How did you answer your research questions? Okay, thank you, because it's still continuing and uh, I am still now working with, the, with this project. My master's degree comes from Korea in this field. That's why we are still in process. I, I, I will work soon, I will finish. Thank you. I, I know it, I know it's not finished yet. Mm. So this uh, work is in the process. Yes, in the process, yes. And, uh, do you have also um, any, uh, you know, do, do you, because I think you have already finished your literature, right? Yes. And maybe you already found the gap. And, yeah. Yes, yes, there is a lot of gap. Uh, you know, this was, uh, this model launched from government side and they insist that, uh, how can I say, application mechanism is very top down. Uh, they have, from Kyrgyzstan side, they have uh, the Ayluk Matthews Gamsuma should be involved in this local development. Uh, however, however, the main uh, locomotives uh, of this project, carrying all these projects are lies on the shoulders of the uh, SEMA leaders. In Korean version, there was two, uh, two leaders. For, in each village, there was two leaders, women and male. In our case, only one leader, and uh, he is not getting any uh, fund for his work because uh, village is the main issue. There, there are so many, so many things. Uh, there are so many gaps because government uh, initiation and NGO initiation has totally different outcomes. However, however, those pilot uh, areas got really good fund. Uh, Two million songs. Uh, one phase, second phase, three to one village got all together six millions, and they have finished it, all their current issues. But if after all, after all, if it finishes, what will they do? That's the that's the main questions. We don't have any kind of um, support from government side. We have we will develop only by ourselves. Uh, we can only learn from. Korea, the how to write projects, what are the main things, and I think this is good lessons, but there is lots of things is in going there. Mm -hmm. uh, I have also one more question. Uh, can you say your research in one sentence? So what is your claim or what's your argue? What do you want to say to us in one sentence? Oh, yes, Ashar is not a good solution for this kind of uh, model. We have to find different method of application this Sema uh, Lundung in Kyrgyzstan. So Ashar is not a good solution. This is only my uh, method. 
message to Korean society. I will present soon in November. So they focused on the Ashar, but Ashar is very traditional. It's one time disposable approach. It's not, uh, it has no, you know, sustainability in this, in, in this kind of project. Uh, yes, this Ashar word is very common in Kyrgyz society. Yeah. In rural areas, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's also very useful when you want to start, when you want to do some big uh, projects or big things. Uh, but uh, however, I would, I would like to learn uh, how many countries do they use uh, this word? Or it's also common practice in their countries. Do you have any, 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 um, do you have any information about Ashar? How many countries do you use? In Central Asia, I have my colleagues from Central Asia, uh, Uzbekistan, they are using Ashar. And Kazakhstan also using Ashar, but Uzbekistan is more actively using and in Kyrgyzstan in rural areas. But it is very helpful, but only one time or seasonal. You cannot uh, every day, Oh, yes. yeah, you cannot yes. use Ashar. Yes. It's, it's totally yeah. collapse, destruction. What Korea wants, we have to use everyday Ashar. It's, it's not a solution. Oh, okay, thank you. So I see some, uh, some questions from uh, Elnura Halmanbetova. So thank you for interesting presentation. What were the main objects of this project? Uh, so she's also asking the same question as I asked ask it. Uh, in the beginning. So what is your research questions? Uh, when we have started this uh, learning process, our main objective was how to apply this authentic uh, original Korean model to Kyrgyzstan. This was our objectives. And what other mechanisms uh, can be implemented from their cooperation culture? Do we have such kind of collaborative culture like uh, they have during Hangyak and they have focused that Ashar will be a solution for collaboration. It is a solution, but in not, in not long term period. So my objectives, our object was how to apply this authentic uh, model to Kyrgyzstan context. Okay, thank you. So, uh, is there any question? If there is no question, I would like to stop uh, uh, the first presentation here. Thank you. And, uh, thank you very much, Aida, uh, for you. this interesting presentation. Uh, and I wish you uh, good luck. Uh, thank you. The next steps of this research. And now I would like to ask um, uh, Muhammad Ali to present his topic on. Uh, yeah. on uh, on smart city approach for sustainable urban development in less developed countries, Egypt yeah. case. Right? And he's from the same university, from the Pech, uh, Pech University from Hungary, right? So please, uh, the floor is yours, Muhammad Ali, and yeah. you can start. Yes, one of you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you well, yes. Yes, yes, okay. Uh, really, I'm happy to uh, present today in the Kyrgyzstan countries. Uh, this is the conference uh, I hear the, really from my college, Aida. And uh, today I learned that it's a huge conference and uh, appreciated to attend in this conference. So uh, my, my, uh, my field is about, I am the assistant lecturer in Cairo University, and I am teaching in my field about urban and regional planning. So uh, I have some focus uh, urban planner, and at the same time, I'm academic. And also I am PhD candidate in the University of Page, and my specific field focusing on the regional development based on knowledge and innovation and smart cities. So now we, we completing in, we complete in the local development, but from the other story, from the, uh, the story. So, the, as we know, that is smart cities, and uh, this is topics uh, related to regional development. But as we will see next, that is this 
topic will affect it more than in different country from country to other. So I will be explaining more in the next slide. So the main question for this is this project or research, which was, would it make sense for Egypt to support smart cities development? It's the right question. And also still question, could smart city policy significant support for regional development in case like Egypt or other cases like Egypt? Because as we hear from the beginning of 2000, that the smart city is coming from the countries which based on technology and something like that. So it would make sense to, for Egypt to support this approach or this policy. Our research concluded that a new administrative capital, it's our case study, I will explain after that, might be the successful path for the smart city model, considering some policy recommendations for implication. And we also conclude that Egyptian model for smart city adopts holistic strategy with a cortical helix to develop the urban system. Because as we, all of us know that is smart city is one of the policy or approach used to development urban policy or urban development policy. So our research were have three, three parts about the background and motivations and we will go directly to the, our main topic or main body of research and we will conclude our research. So uh, quickly about the background that smart cities have some, become the proposed model for urban development, as I mentioned from the second, in the innovation and knowledge area. And also in the same time, this model consists four basics about it, this model about human capital, infrastructure, social capital, and entrepreneurial capital. So if we, when we search in every part of this model, it's target human capital, which also related to local development for the case, because to build the successful um, model for smart city, we will mention that based on the human or localized factors related to indigenous theory, which you, uh, our professor mentioned from the beginning of our session. And the infrastructure also, so different infrastructure. So this is, so social capital and entrepreneurial. And the Philip Massey definition has offered by Hill in, in the beginning of thousand. And he focusing on the city as monitors and integrated conditions for all its structural <coughs> infrastructure. And also uh, he argued that it can, can, that is the city, can we better optimize its resources and the plan is presented, maintain, and monitor security. And by the end, our aim from this type of cities or from this policy, maximizing service to its citizens. So our, our paper or our project talking about Egypt. So my, my specific field as academic and as well also urban regional planner, Egypt have uh, in the beginning of 2013, the, uh, Egypt put uh, Egypt vision uh, 2030. And this is a vision aimed to achieve uh, in among the top 30 countries in the world in terms of quality of life, anti-corruption, the size of economy and markets competitions and the human development. So the country to achieve this, they put the new policies in introduced for sustainable development through new fourth generation sets. So, this is pillar or this is a um, tool to support and achieve this aim from 2013. And also the right issue, how can we dealing with from research and the practice field? So my, my aim in this research, because I'm, I'm already coming from practical in the field from urban planning and also in the field of policy and the field of the the theoretical, so how we can dealing to apply this type of policy in the fact, in the land, and how this will be effect on the development and the regional development based on innovation and knowledge. Egypt, maybe not of all of you know about Egypt. Egypt is a huge country from population, from economy, from size also. Egypt is one of the major economics in the MENA region, and Egyptian population generality is concentrated in the around Delta, it will be here, it's delta around Delta and level nine. So 7% of the area 
concentrated for most of 95 of the pollution, around 1 million. So, and also Egypt economy have some expectation from World Bank and others of the international institutions that grow 5% in the, this next year, although there are COVID and something like that. So we have some challenge about the pollution, some concentration around the Delta River Nile, and we have some expectation it's improvement in economy, although the COVID. So motivation and problem, and for this is research that Egypt, uh, like I, please give me some seconds to explain the story from the beginning of 2011, because Egypt, one of the countries- uh, they have, we have uh, Egyptian revolution 2011 and the other wave 2013. And by the 2013, after this political things, it's stable. Egypt put Egypt vision 2030, sustainable development strategy and the new urban development, one of the main pillars. In the same time, we put promising national plan to establish 14 generation cities. And also we have some ambitious programs and mega projects for 2013. So in the same time, we have urban concentration around Cairo region, and we have a lot of problem from this concentration. So about all of this mix up, we need to the susceptibility of the Egyptian situation to the policy of a smart city. So now I will move in to the the core of my, my research, it's based on the two or three parts. Already I have some uh, smart city comprehension of the concept and smart city experience from the others, from the globe. So I use systematic teacher review method to collect this is, uh, this is uh, examples or, or experiences. And in the same time for Egyptian case, I use the case study analysis policy through narrative approach. So, and I, I use my data technical interview from officials, from the people who are responsible to make decision makers and put the, the policy through the, our Egyptian ministries. And also I collected uh, the secondary data from policy document material. Before starting to go to the, my country case, what in developing countries, what have in the other? because already there are cases study before us started in this model. For example, in India model, they launched a smart city strategy and started by 100 smart cities and the, the aim of them to construct a new smart city, auto-correlated for the larger city. So now we have some common aim. They also built this city around the larger city. And the model responds to and aim to development demography and the constitute urban development issue and smart city should be discussed and they mention and they discuss or uh, search um, uh, good in this way that is it be it will be evolutionary path in the other case or in the other thing uh, pattern around the global chinese model they make mix between the new smart city and smart city development initiatives and also this that not not small uh, cities it's a huge 154 and but there are some challenges faces them that with our real population attractive and this is really in our developing countries it will be some main of a challenge to attract people for this new status and also that this concern because costing and building and so on and also others in indonesian model there are significant urban area growth and the aim in this to improve city surface and life so when we see for this is three examples the aim from every example is different. So now we're talking about indigenous and the localized factors based on the case. So as we know, that is not fit, not all fit size to all. So this is as a local development also. And also in 2015, they make huge project and later the Indonesian smart city model, it's administrative techno area. So through, through this is, uh, case study, there are different drivers for smart city development. This is the, the, the policy in developing countries because my research focusing in developing countries and I argued that the smart city policy and, and the new urban development policy is different from developed to, to developing countries because in developing countries, there are some drivers. One of them is financial capacity. 
robust regulatory environment, technology and infrastructure readiness. It's very important because maybe you can have play this smart city, but you, you don't have reading yet to, to apply this. Human capital, stability, and knowledge created, and so on. And also, the challenge in this, is, in this is cases in developing country, financing is one, one of these challenge. Shortage of investment, unreadiness, multiple security, and lack of qualified and skilled, and lack of technical knowledge. So what we learned about others that in, in developing countries, that in, in, in case if you need in developing countries, for example, like Kyrgyzstan or any country in developing country, you should to necessarily understand the local urban development issue. And also regional development characteristic. Smart city development directly influences the sustainable economy for developing countries like Sri Lanka, China, India. So they target from smart city to, to influence the sustainable economy. Smart city strategy, including Egypt and also uh, developing countries, should be integrated with the regional policy. And this is important. So if you need to apply regional uh, smart city policy in your, in, your, in your situation, you should integrate it with the regional policy in your country. So in our case, because we don't have enough time to for more detail, in our case, Egypt, Egypt have huge, or not huge, it's in the beginning considered huge, they have 14 smart cities program. Some of them it's already constructed and starting in the work and others not yet. For example, Egypt have around in seven, seven regions and these seven regions are around 14 cities. But here I, I, I mentioned around just eight or 11 because it's, it's available online data. And in, in these cases, for example, the Cairo new administrative capital, Egypt consider this it's a pioneer model for smart city. And we will see about the case study now, new administrative capital, how the, the country used this to uh, enter the smart city era. Uh, I, I, I just, I need mention here in this table, maybe you can check in, in the presentation after that, just uh, in different Egypt have uh, 14 smart city, but, uh, but would some of this is around the country, not uh, focusing in some, because Egypt, aimed by this to increase the area which have the pollution from 7% to 10% from the total area. So urban development, but yeah. I'm very sorry for the interruption. Uh, you have three minutes left. Okay, okay. So, and also results uh, from policy, Egyptian policy for a smart city that we have two stage of policy. The policy aim to enter the urban smart cities era with new cities approach. And we will take this model in second stage to transfer for the existing city. Government former national committee responsible for the smart city proposed model. And this is important in the administration for smart city policy. It has a challenge from other cases. And new administrative capital considered to be guide model for the policy. And the policy tools represent significant in the new administrative capital. So now, in the last two minutes, I will enter the new administrative capital. It's the UNIR model. model. It's a it's, uh, new capital in Egypt. It started from 2014. And now, it's, by the end of this month, it uh, will be the, the opening stage for the, the first stage of the city. It's far from certified Kilo from Cairo. And it's already the first stage is already fi finished. And the pillar of this model is based on three main a pillar, the human capital component, information of spatial database and secure the smart city. And this is this is built the, the main model and the new administrative capital, it's a fourth generation city. And during the first phase, it targets to be 5 million people in, uh, in the first stage. And the, the opening formal will be December, this December, and it be provide innovation environment. And also, uh, the table, uh, this is an important thing, but I just mentioned here that is a smart city model for the Egyptian smart city uh, model targets three aims. Aim number one, competitive advantage, brutality, and regionalization expense. Because as if you search about sustainability, you need money. If you need money, you need some smart, smart service to cover competitive advantage and also to regionalization. And this is model can you mention in our uh, after I finish in presentation, but the two main things here, that is there are some 
uh, this model is built especially for Egyptian model because it's based on city operating center and command the control center because this is built from scratch. So you have all of things based on your uh, data and your, your security. So, so uh, no administrative capital on success bus, but it be focusing on transfer knowledge acquired from the new administrative capital to other city, not to transfer model. So you should take care in your other cases to apply this policy, the non localized uh, factors, and also considering the spatial characteristic and accumulation of local knowledge. And the stage of urbanization for Egyptian cities must be considered because you don't apply, it's, don't we imagine to apply this model for the city don't able to be in the third or fourth level of urbanization. And the smart city model social perspective is used to get different policy better on the every region urban smartness. And by the end, and my statement, I, the smart city policy, it should be an eventual under development policy. So we will say, to summarize my presentation, that the current study aim to discuss the smart city concept for developing country by focusing on the Egyptian model through the pioneer model. Yes, we can by the end talk, yes, yeah, the smart city policy may be sustainable development policy supported, taking our or some implementation policy. The Egyptian case study, a smart city model use holistic strategy with credible helix. And I, we don't have enough time to explain what is the helix of all of them. And the, the uh, new administrative capital also practical governance system of managing the smart city model because it builds the new company to, de to manage this uh, model, not just the government. So it will be cooperation between private sector and government and something there are model can you check this model and uh, um, uh, how we manage this from the, the company this is linked and by the end we can we have we still some several questions remain answered through more investigation research from stakeholders through the initial operating period so through three four years uh, coming we can have some reaction from stakeholders and how the innovation system factors work inside the model and by the end we need to answer this question in the future research. What is the impact from new administrative capital? Какое, uh, какое воздействие, uh, для городов? System. By the end, if you need any more details about the paper, can you mention and, and citing in the pub, um, Journal of Public Affairs in this link? And by the end, thank you for my hearing. And sorry if I have uh, passed my time and I'm hearing your question if, if there are any queries. Thanks a lot. Great. Thank you, Mohamed Ali, for this insight, uh, insightful and interesting presentation, including a lot of information, tables, figures, etc. So now I would like to open the floor for discussion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And any suggestion, any question, any comments are welcome. In chat box, nothing. Uh, in chat box, nothing. Yeah. Our colleagues are thinking. So while they are thinking, let me ask one question. So yeah, your please. first, yes, your first question was, would it uh, make sense to, to support smart cities development, right? Yeah. So, and uh, how did you answer this research question? Sorry, you ask about the data or what? Your research question was, uh, would it make sense? Yeah, 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 to yeah, yeah. Support, to support smart city, yeah, smart yeah. city development, yes. Yes, yes. And it's, it's our right question in this paper, on this study, what it makes sense to support smart city in developing countries like Egypt. And by the end of this study, I answered yes, it's can we support this, but with some concern because ah. Because what kind of, of constraint? Sorry, uh, what kind of concerns or some? Yeah, yeah. Because in the developing countries before Egypt, in Indonesia, and on the Chinese model, on the Indian model, and a lot of this, because as you told, it's different between developed and developing countries. So we're talking now about developing okay. countries. So if we need to apply this policy in developing countries. We should some recommendation or some uh, take care, like 
which will be based on the localized factors. You don't, we don't need to export the model from uh, Germany or from other countries to put in, country, in your country. So you should take care to apply the model. And second thing, it should be able or based on uh, factors and characteristics for your local uh, or regional development in your country. So in our case, in Egypt, we built this new smart city, new administrative capital, it's far from 50 kilo from here, from Cairo, the capital, because we need to increase the area which have people. But we have a lot of new, new cities. But especially why smart city in the new year? Because we have a lot of projects now based on knowledge and innovation. Like if we have the new generation, new fourth generation university. So if you build between university and business and the community, so you need uh, environment uh, able to apply this. So in existing cities, in our case, it's not enough. So we need something new. So by the end of the time, yes, we can apply the smart city model in the case like Egypt or any different developing country based on its localization factors. Yeah. Any other questions? Still, we have time um, to take some more questions. Uh, I can also ask my second question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, yeah. Uh, if it's possible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, can you go to your uh, slide number? I don't know. I didn't uh, pay attention, but it was about. Can I share? Can I share again? Yes. Yes. Okay. I think. Do so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what is this one? What's the number? Methodology. I, I didn't yes, pay attention. The, uh, methodology. Yeah, yeah. Can you open this? This? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, uh, it it was also interesting for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Maybe. So I just okay, want to learn the out. way how. Yeah, yeah, I just want to learn um, your methodology, uh, the way how you collect the data. And, yes, uh, this yeah. and, and methodology is based on two, uh, two parts. Two parts uh, part about the outside Egypt, what, other, what, what happened in the other cases in the, in the world from two theoretical, but one about smart city comprehension on the concept, the definition and, and how the region of the smart, uh, smart city, because smart city, if you coming from for example, computer science, you can start talking about smart city. If you're coming from uh, medicine, can you smart about smart city? But I am focusing on smart city from regional and urban development because smart city, it's a huge uh, field. And, uh, and also in the second part, smart city model for least developed countries. So to collect these experiences and uh, case study and uh, the, my, my uh, related and highly relevant uh, for my topic, I use systematic literature review method to collect this. But from Egypt case, I have two ways to collect data. Technical interview, I make four interview for official in the, one of them is the vice uh, head of the new administrative capital company, the bar, uh, company, and the other from minister, it's uh, like uh, vice minister of the housing and community urban development. Why I selected officials? Because I need to uh, dis discover the policy, how policy is put it, how policy working, how decision making work. But for this, I ask in the next research, I need to take feedback from stakeholders, but still stakeholders not full now because it's the initial um, stage for new administrative capital and additional policy document material. So it's my methodology, how to collect data and how to collect smart city cases around the globe. Okay. Yeah. I hope to clear my, my answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm already satisfied with your answer. Yeah. So uh, there is one uh, one feedback uh, from Elnora. Uh, yeah, thank you for the presentation. I wonder how does building smart cities related to human development? Yes, because as you, uh, but because the, 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 the sorry, sorry. Okay, 
because uh, the presentation don't have more details because we don't have enough time. Smart city, we have six. Uh, sorry, I, I need to stop this. Yes, smart city have six pillars, smart infrastructure, smart service, smart economy, and smart people. So if you need to uh, develop with people which will live in this city, it's not like, no, I know it's all of us, it's people, but you search about skilled people. How is this? Because this is people will manage the city, will live in the city, will use the service. So uh, human development in this city, you need to work, uh, increase the human devel development indicators through the people which will working. Because in our case, all of the government institutions will move by the end of December. All of the ministers, all of the uh, president in uh, palace, prime minister, parliament, all of the government will move. So if you need to move all of the government there, not the same people. So you need to increase the development indicators, as, as I mentioned, to be one of the 30 in the beginning of the world. So smart city, to conclude my answer, smart city can be the successful way to develop human development, but you should to search what, what people, what people will be able to apply this policy from the government, from the private sector, from the citizen which will live in this city, and by the end from the business coming to invest and build and sustain this city. I hope to be answered. Uh, there are other uh, questions. Mm -hmm. Are yeah. built for citizens? How would data provided by officials would re reflect the impact of smart city? As I told, this is a case study. I collected the to data to, to draw for myself what is the policy work because I have some conceptual uh, or theoretical background. And I need to collect the uh, policy tools from the officials if I, in the beginning, I like compare, it's already we are in the way, okay, so theoretically, okay, you have applied the same theoretical around the globe. But the second question, if you, when you apply this, until now we apply, okay, there are some system to apply the, as you told about the, uh, the building, the, 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 the policy, but we, if we need to take reflect our influence on the people in this city, we should to wait at least this from three to five years in the initial opening to see what is the influence from the people and stakeholders and people which live already or work. Because now it's a challenge and government makes some, some new concept to moving all of the people, for example, if you are working in government and move to new administrative capital, okay, can you take your your flat or your house there and government will give you some, some loan to stay there because you will find all of the circles there. So we take, if we should to take the feedback, I think it will be uh, logic. We wait three or five years, I, as I mentioned also in my paper. Uh, if there are other questions, I will be happy. There is no other question. Yeah. yeah. And uh, due to uh, our time limited, yeah, due to the limited time, I would yeah. like to finish uh, this presentation and thank you, Muhammad Ali, for this uh, presentation. Yeah. And uh, I wish you good luck. All the yeah, best. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. And for yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, please. Ah, okay. Okay. Now I would like to to ask uh, Didor Berdikhichov uh, to present his topic on economic impact of the Sardoba dam, dam failure on Sardaria, Sardaria region, a mixed methods assessment. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Okay. So. Uh... I am Didar Berdeklichev. Currently, I am MA student in OIC Academy in Bishkek uh, in Economic Governance and Development uh, Department. Uh, 
so my topic is about economic impact of the Sardoba Dam failure. Uh, maybe you know, maybe you don't, but I will explain what is uh, what it, what that was a catastrophic event on Sardaria region and uh, using mixed mass assessments. And I want to thank uh, first of all my supervisor, Dr. Philip Schroeder, and uh, my instructor uh, on research methods, uh, Ms. Akalai Muhtarbek, because uh, they helped me a lot on this uh, project. So uh, typical content, uh, without further ado, let's start. Uh, Sardoba, then failure, 1st of May, 2020, um, failed and uh, over 120,000 hectare of uh, land were flooded by water. And so in order to, you should be able uh, to uh, estimate how big is it, it's uh, almost 10 times um, uh, bigger than Bishkek or Dushanbe or twice bigger than Astana or almost four times bigger than Kabul city and uh, half of the water uh, which in which was in uh, water reservoir was uh, lost four people died 60 brought to hospital and less than 100,000 uh, people relocated in Uzbekistan in some part of Kazakhstan specifically in Turkestan area 32,000 people were relocated to us outside the flooded region so uh, this is a satellite picture of Sadaba reservoir just before one day before the uh, the accident and uh, one week after. So you can see that half of water is uh, is not in the reservoir and this uh, this area is just destroyed by the uh, water and people lost a lot of things, which we'll re discuss right now. And uh, one picture in order to demonstrate uh, how uh, the massive water scale. And my research question, uh, I have two bigger questions, uh, meaning that uh, first one is, how did economic situation change in the area after the dam accident? And sub questions to, port, to support this question is, how did the Sardaba dam failure affect the prices in the area? And how did the Sardaba dam failure affect the external trade in the area? And second question, um, I will, answer it uh, by using in, uh, interviews and qualitative tools. How do local victims feel about their life and will being changed uh, because and only because of the damn accident? I will also explain why I am saying this. So I am not going to discuss literature review right now because of lack of time. Uh, I'm gonna introduce you one uh, concept uh, of uh, PLOF index, uh, which uh, was created by me and my supervisor in Central Bank when I was doing my research intern. So a PLOF index is uh, constructed by these ingredients uh, of prices. You don't add any um, human, human cap capital here, labor, but just prices of these ingredients, how much it would cost us to, to, uh, to cook one uh, kiji rice PLOF. And it has 91% uh, correlation with uh, consumer price indexes. And it's, uh, so our uh, intention and motivation was uh, we want to support policy, uh, communication policy department and central bank. So then um, this pull of, uh, pull of index is so acceptable and understandable. Now as a statistics committee is announcing it monthly. So I'm going to use this uh, method to, in order to assess the impact on exactly pull of index. And this is... Uh, kind of alternative or regional alternative to Big Mac index and Borsch index, which is used in uh, some parts of Europe and, and Western countries. So data description, uh, my data is coming from, uh, they are coming from Central Bank Statistics Committee. Uh, prices are, are from December 2017 till February 2021. I can update them, but this is what I have right now. And I have external trade, uh, which is a summation of import and export. For qualitative part, I use my primary data interviews, I had con con conducted 16 interviews in Sardaria region and about 10 interviews in uh, in Navaj region. Uh, okay, so I have one problem here, which is COVID-19 problem. It might be the case that COVID-19 could affect the uh, price or external trade. We don't know this because just right one and a half months before um, lockdown started in the area. So 
And it might be case that I, we could be biased a little bit. In order to control COVID-19 problem, uh, we are using counterfactual. So uh, we, we have very strong assumption here that it would be the same price or external trade in Sardaria region if uh, um, if COVID, uh, if a uh, dam accident didn't happen. So I'm I'm taking a Navai region as this counterfactual. It would happen as the same as Navai region because it has the highest correlation um, uh, with Sardaria region uh, uh, in terms of prices. Uh, and you can see that the prices overall in Uzbekistan uh, in terms of uh, regions, they are quite... Uh, uh, homogeneous. So conceptual framework looks like this. Uh, Sartaria and Navai region is uh, giving us uh, the same kind of very similar uh, trajectory of prices and external trade before lockdown and after lockdown because they are uh, facing to the same thing together. But that accident only in Sardaria region happened, but not in Navai. So the difference between indicators are giving us the exact and true effect of the dam accident uh, to Sardaria region. Uh, so I'm using quasi-experimental methods, which is uh, uh, known as multiple group time series analysis. So I have two dummy variables here. Mm, uh, one is uh, to indicate before the accident and after the accident, uh, indicating only in timeline variable. And the another uh, dummy is cohort assignment dummy. It is whether it is Navai or uh, Sardaria. If it is Sardaria region, it's treatment one. If it's Navai, uh, it's uh, zero. So uh, in with graph, it would be like this. It it very looks like a DID difference and difference methods, but in time uh, series. So. Uh, we are having, let's suppose we, we have one uh, trend and it is disrupted by this intervention here and post intervention we have another trend. At the same with the Sardaria region, let's say it's just uh, hypothetical. And the change between post intervention slope is effect. So change between this slope and this slope is the true effect here. Uh, my qualitative research design is semi-structured uh, questions. I visited Sardaria and Navai. I asked them how well-being changed, uh, some introductory questions, how daily life changed, gains and losses. And, and in order to support my results from uh, quantitative results, uh, uh, I'm gonna, I asked already, uh, what do you, uh, did you feel any unusual price increase in the, uh, after the uh, accident? So I, I've been in Novai region as well, uh, in order to be, uh, uh, to be okay with contrafactual principle. Again, I walk, uh, I went away from city 100 kilometers and visited Karamana, Tashrabat and Beshrabat districts, uh, quite similar uh, uh, life conditions as Sardoba. And all interviews are transcribed and translated and coded. And uh, now uh, let's go through some results. Uh, Plov index results. Uh, the main thing what I was interested in is, uh, was the, the change in slope. So in my uh, model, it's beta 7 here, and it's, it's giving significant change. So prices are 1,217 sums uh, more expensive only because of the accident, or let's say after the accident. Uh, compared to Navai region, which also had the uh, COVID accident, a COVID case. So it is only, uh, so because I used the Navai region as a counterfactual here, it's giving me the change, like difference in the slopes. But we don't have any significant uh, change in trade volume, uh, import plus uh, export. So it, it, it had the same, quite same um, uh, slope after the accident. Uh, results from interviews. So I visited uh, first about Sardaria region. I have been here, there uh, for one and a half weeks and lived there and I walked on that uh, damaged area. Uh, government did a lot of reforms there, new apartments and renovation of houses were done. And if the, they lost uh, entire their house because they are built from an, uh, soil, they, they just lost their houses. They were provided, but uh, they were pro provided a new apartment. 
uh, but if they have if they have that house but a little bit damaged they were just renovated and they were given all home appliances and 40 million some compensation it is a, a bit less than four thousand uh, dollar and another quite positive thing to say it's urban life now it's kind of urbanized life because uh, then density uh, in population uh, lots of people are living very near each other nearer each other than before where rural life and uh, all schools were renovated by that reforms another good thing is water and natural gas provision before that they didn't have any drinkable water and natural gas uh, also they were using uh, that natural channel uh, waters to boil and use it. And they didn't, they, uh, now they are not using firewood or coal to heat water or to cook. And combine it, these facilities combine it with a uh, host appliance that uh, is boiler. Now they are, uh, they have access to a uh, heating system as well. One of my respondents said that uh, it's been ages that uh, uh, her husband said that it's been ages that he went to sleep without uh, warm casual clothes in winter, uh, referring to the fact that uh, in winter it was very really nice and warm in their house. And based on their words, it's cheaper. And my uh, some respondents uh, from school, uh, teachers who are teachers, they said that it, uh, after accident, it, it, they are seeing better sanitation, that their kids in the school, uh, they are wearing um, clean clothes, they are shining, and before accident, uh, they could have an access to, uh, to have a shower uh, once if, every two weeks, maybe. And another thing is unemployment. Let's uh, start uh, a bit negative uh, side effect of this accident. Uh, because of co uh, because of this accident, uh, uh, people lost their lands um, because there is agri cluster company by uh, Singaporean company. Now they are not using um, hiring 10, 30 people as before. Now you are, uh, in one cluster, maybe one person works because of uh, high efficiency uh, technological uh, equipment and uh, no facilities to keep cattle it's apartments they don't have any house uh, cattle houses to keep and no uh, peasantry they, they were used to be busy with peasantry and keeping cattle now it's just urbanized and they don't have an access to that thing and they are jobless so Another thing uh, I asked about prices, did you feel any unusual price increase? Because I had already that results from my quantitative analysis. And half of my uh, respondents said that they don't know because government uh, provided them with food and products for six months after the accident. They didn't do any grocery purchases. So that's why they don't know half of them. They said like, yes, it is because we are not doing cattle. Uh, keeping cattle, we have less uh, peasantry and productivity of land also decreased uh, based on their uh, 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 their words because of uh, lack of water you know, from channels because dam has not water and because of the sand in the uh, in the uh, soil because water uh, uh, brought a, a massive amount of sand to the uh, soil, which is very harmful to productivity of land. And now uh, they had to buy it from other regions. And naturally, uh, from his words, uh, everything is uh, more expensive uh, for thousand sums, which is quite straightforward and explanatory to my uh, quantitative results. And another thing, uh, I called it sudden urbanization problem, uh, because very rapid transformation from rural area uh, lifestyle to urban uh, lifestyle, uh, their uh, living expenses are also increased. Uh, one of my respondents said that it's in order to live in these fancy facilities, uh, they should work uh, hard and even more than before and reduced income because of unemployment, what we discussed just before. And Another insight uh, from interviews, it's panic and health, health issues. People are a bit scared. In 2021, this year, January, mid-January, they had fake dam failure incident. Some young, bored guys just spread out uh, fake in, uh, incident uh, news 
and people uh, went out and started to run away police and governmental officials to try to stop them but it didn't help but they just closed the regional borders then they just uh, calmed down and they come back they came back to their their houses but at that, at that time many people had very uh, bad health issues with their um, uh, encountered with health issues. Some people even died because of heart attack. Uh, diabetics increase it. Even little kids are being born uh, with diabetics. And a little bit melancholy uh, inside the society. So when this, this respondent explained to me very well this. They are in a very good mood, but they lost their spirit uh, based on his uh, uh, words. So and one of Azamai and other uh, respondents uh, say that uh, he remembers everything and that noise and cold from the dam side. And it's a bit uh, mental uh, traumatic uh, issue in the, in the region. So, uh, but when you ask them, are you happier? Like overall, if you just compare it uh, with what you got and what you lost, uh, almost, Everyone, majority, let's say they are happier. And I and I when I ask them, would it would you think would it be the same if you didn't have any accident here? You would have these facilities, water, gas, new apartments, urban life. And they say, uh, no, it wouldn't be the same for sure. Uh, we jumped to the future something like uh, 20 hundred years ahead, uh, based on their words. And they are expressing their gratitude to government, president, of course, and they are grateful that they are themselves and their relatives are alive and overall people are happier. And when I talk about with them, what's, what's the happiness and about ha being happy, most of them and majority of them uh, say that, yeah, I'm happy. I have uh, that much kids. I have that much grandchildren. So this kind of perceptions. Let's do a uh, quick overview to interviews. So a reduced productivity, that's why prices increase it because they are not um, growing any products there. Uh, and at the same time, no land because it was given to agri cluster company, which is not hiring people and unemployed. And Dora, I'm very sorry for the interruption. You have four minutes left. Okay, I'm, I'm finishing. So uh, with sudden urbanization problem, it's hitting more even because when prices are more increasing, at the same time, they are earning less and they should afford that fancy facilities. It's, it's being a bit problematic uh, in the context of panic and health issues. But still, when you wait it and when they ask them, they are grateful to what what uh, government compensated with water provision, gas provision and new houses. And let's wrap up here. Um, uh, so conclusion, there is statistically significant change in price due to dam accident. There is no any significant change in external trade. Uh, living conditions of people from accident area improved dramatically because of rapid reforms. People consider themselves happier and grateful. And uh, although unemployment inflation and sudden urbanization problems, uh, they exist. Uh, thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'm open to answer any comments or questions. Okay, thank you very much, Didor, for this nice uh, and interesting presentation where you use it uh, both uh, methods such as, such as quantitative and qualitative, and you try to show the impact of uh, shock, which which was the which was the accident, right? Just one year ago. So it's my first time that I have seen uh, this uh, the impact of uh, this shock on on the on the on the economic situation changes. So now uh, I will uh, open the floor for the QA section. So we have already one uh, one uh, one uh, comment from the from from Dior. Yes. So question, how them failure in Sirdaria region affected the prices in neighboring regions, Jizah and Tashkent region, where people relocated most, if you observe them also? Uh, to be honest, I don't have, uh, I, I didn't check this uh, insight from data, uh, but a lot of people from accident areas, they moved to Jizah 
when uh, flood came because a Sardera region it's a uh, quite hybrid and it's not a place where with history it's 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 actually uh, uh, there is no ind indigenous people they are from Jizakh they are from other parts of the uh, country so they lots of them moved to Jizakh at some Tashkent region uh, maybe prices uh, could affect that regions because of more demand there but I cannot uh, tell anything right now because I don't know the insights and I didn't check it statistically. Thank you. Um, any other uh, question? Any other comments? Uh, let me ask one question then. Mm, so you used a uh, uh, progression uh, model Right. I don't know. Is it a difference in difference or what? It's multiple group um, time series. So you didn't use difference and difference, right? No. But you have two groups, right? Yeah. One group yeah. for the for the Sardoba, right? Sardoba. Yeah. And uh, you have also control group, which is Nawai, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, this slide, yes. And uh, you could also use the difference and difference since you have uh, two periods before and after. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm also considering it to add to the uh, thesis, but, uh, but I haven't done yet. Yeah, I can do it. Can you show your slide uh, on equation? Uh, yes. yes, this one. So uh, here I, I, I can see uh, the equation uh, that uh, you will use in your regression analysis, right? But uh, but I didn't see, I couldn't see uh, in your presentation this slide about your uh, results because in results you are coming up with some uh, some statements, some claim, but they are not taken from the from the regression results. How did you come up with this with those results? These results are uh, these results are ah okay okay on the right from, side okay yeah yeah okay. yeah but uh, but it's better to you know to des redesign. Okay, so yeah, so you just use it uh, like this. Okay, okay, I see, I see from here, yeah, I see. But uh, then I have another question, uh, but uh, I will ask uh, after the Elnora's question because she's asking one question. And if you see on the right side. Uh, yeah. I wonder if the government support, uh, sorry, I wonder if the government support given is sustainable long-term considering the majority of people living in these areas are farmers. I'm not sure about future plans of government, uh, but they are, uh, I know that they have plans to extend that urbanization pr uh, process there. In the neighboring uh, districts, they have some plans to build more apartments, but I don't know about, uh, maybe it would be very difficult for them to live there because without jobs, they cannot do uh, afford that life. And and another then question. There is also yeah, another question from how Rana. do you think Sardoba region authority could resolve unemployment problem? Uh, they have uh, some couple uh, attempts to do it. They built actually one um, enthusiastic uh, interpreter entrepreneur from there who wanted to build and build also textile company. It's working there, but. My respondents are saying that uh, they are not paying uh, salaries on time. Every four months they are paying, and it's it's very low salary salaries, something like sixty five dollar uh, for each person. So uh, they have that tries uh, attempts, and and there is uh, cluster as well. But I'm not sure if it's the um, initiation of uh, local government. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dieter. And uh, so uh, you are saying that uh, your treatment and control group are same before the accident, uh, before the dam accident, right? Yes. Yes. In order to come to check, in order to check the real impact of the of the dam accident, we need to have the same same two groups, right? Yeah, uh, before the before the any shock. So 
so when you go to that slide, but yeah, before it was open, can you go? They were they were not uh, not this one. Yes, this is it is the uh, line of two groups or what? Yeah, this is a line of two groups. Uh, before dashed line, it's pre-intervention time. After this is post-intervention. This is the exact of uh, first of May two thousand twenty. So oh, this these are outcome of outcomes of two groups, right? Yeah, and but the why results... they are not same? Why they are not same before the intervention? Uh, do you mean here the slope? Yes, yes, slope. So uh, statistically, they are uh, here somewhere. So slope of. Uh, so I should go to this slide first. So uh, beta five. Yes, this is true. This is true. This is true because they are same before the intervention, right? Before no, the it, can, it it can be uh, not the same as well. Uh, like before intervention, as you can see but, here. Uh, but, but if you are not same, then you are not able to compare. I can compare it because because they have very. Uh, uh, high correlation and like they have very similar trajectory. Then you you should have uh, the same slope. Now you can I don't know the okay the uh, uh, slope is very important but uh, the magnitude uh, uh, is subject to change right one maybe have more one have maybe less but uh, the slope of two groups should be same before the intervention. Then you can uh, you can. You can now you can do any analysis, okay? If they are same, say if they have same slope before the intervention. But here their slope is uh, their slopes are different, and then you cannot compare it because one is total different from the second one. Mm, I see. Yeah, but can you go to back to your next slide? What? Uh, it's so, yeah. The, 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 they are That's same. This yeah this. Yeah, this is, see here the slope is, they are same. Then you can compare if you have this kind of slope, okay? Because one is more and one is less than the, the second one. Then you can compare because slopes are same, okay? And then, yeah, then it is right to use in this model. Otherwise, your result uh, might be biased. Okay, I see. And then it is also good to show all those, you know, this put before how much price did they have for the treatment treatment group and for the control group, okay? And then after that, how much it is decreased or increased, okay? So you are focusing on the on the what on the uh, on the counter on the counter what counter counterfactual counterfactual factor, right? So what would have happened if there was no them accident, right? So yeah. it is your it is your own research question. Huh? So you want yeah. to answer this question. My support to my assumption it would happen like Navai region. Uh, it was uh, supported by this number actually. What I was uh, looking at this ninety nine point three percent of correlation with uh, with Navai region here. Uh, uh, so Navai is uh, so green. And Sardaria is uh, a bit gray. So they have quite similar, and this is the highest. So even if I average the group of countries, of regions, I will not be able to create better counterfactual than Navai region. So what, what we are seeing here in the difference in slopes, pre-intervention slope difference is, is the best what we can do right now based on what happened, because it's natural experiment. We can... Uh, not control. Uh, I understand that it's it's a bit biased, but if I use another region or if I use another or a country average, it would uh, it maybe it will not be it it will not be better than this. Okay, but um, anyway, it, you can also put the numbers of regression here, right? On the right side, you have coefficients, right? You can yeah. put these coefficients on the on the left side. Of your table, before and after, because you need to use three uh, variables, such as treatment variable, time variable, and interaction of these two variables, right? In order to say uh, the impact, the real impact. Yeah. Okay. So uh, time is up. I think we have one more minute. So there is also one question now. In case I, I want to take 
and sort of uh, can you see can you read by yes, yourself yes, yes. i wonder if you happen to know what was the price increase due to covid pandemic uh, as my research question was not focusing on that i was ignoring that nationally yes we it's possible to derive using this method but just changing the time intervention time starting the intervention time but i, I don't know and prices can uh, have two efforts. first is just short term uh, shock just right after lockdown and the next wave maybe will come afterwards something it, it can be after one year as well maybe these times as central bank of uzbekistan forecasted uh, because of less uh, production at that back then okay thank you Vidor, uh, for your explanation and uh, yeah i think uh, it was very interesting presentation and uh, i also like it uh, and now, uh, yeah, thank you very much, dear participants, for your time and and also for your valuable comments. And our ses session has come to end, and it was a great opportunity for us to to talk and get to know each other, and as well as share information between us. And in addition, I would like to thank uh, the organizers, especially the staff of the. University of Central Asia, Kanat um, Leke, Rama Maglevsky, and also uh, Damir Esenali, Tilman Brook, as well as other partners, and also from the uh, University of Central Asia, uh, Elita and Zalina, uh, and also other partners who helped us uh, to, to organize such a nice event. Uh, and this is a unique conference that they do every year, and I hope they will do also next year and it will be uh, it will be a uh, tradition for us to have uh, such a nice uh, conference every year and with this uh, dear colleagues i thank you very much again